greet you in the name of Christ on this fourth Sunday in Easter, and it is traditionally known as the Good Shepherd Sunday, and I'm sure you'll understand why as we proceed into worship. We also welcome once again Michelle Messina, uh, who is a 10th grader at Wheeler High School, and she is sharing her um, ministry of music along with Michael Noonan for our prelude today. So let us be in the spirit of worship. Guide us to watch for signposts 
that lead us on the narrow road toward you. Amid the voices calling for our attention, help us hear your voice that leads us beside still waters and fills the cup of our lives to the brim. Seek us when we are lost and restore us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Big bad wolf, big bad wolf, 
Today we have referenced Psalm 23, which of course is the psalm um, about the shepherd who leads us. And the other two texts come from the New Testament. So I first read from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, beginning with verse 11. And I invite us to listen for this, the word of God. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. And from the Acts of the Apostles, we read from chapter 4 today. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and they asked, how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Shepherd Sunday, and it makes sense considering our scriptures. Jesus even tells us that he is the Good Shepherd, and he makes a lot of references to his one flock, the sheep. Now, as you may know, I've been living on a sheep farm now for four years. I, I had to think about the dates, and I can't believe it's been four years. And I noticed that this week, the ewes were sent out to graze on the grass this, uh, for the first time since the fall. And I guess the third week or fourth week in April means the grass is green and long enough. And the ewes, I mean, it was funny to watch because they were like, it was like children after candy. They, they just went out there and they were just spread all over the acres. And there's something very calming, very bucolic about watching the sheep graze. Now, I've learned a lot about sheep, as you may guess, and so I'll share a little bit about what I've gleaned over the years. And they might shed a little bit of light on what Jesus is saying to us in, in his lesson about being the Good Shepherd. Now, because sheep are herd animals, they don't like to be alone. So one is when one is stuck or separated from the herd, they will ah and make themselves known. And sheep are very curious. They will watch you and watch you, but if you try and go near them, they back right up. So they're also curious, but nervous. And it's an interesting combination. Sheep are also very stubborn, as I've learned. I remember last year seeing a baby lamb wanting to go forward through the electric fence, and he was stuck in it. And of course, when you want to go out there, of course, I have to turn the fence off, but um, I can see them from my window. The farmhouse is behind where I live, or it's in front of where I live. I look out the back. And so the, the farmers don't always know <laughs> there's a sheep in trouble, so I find myself putting my boots on and wandering out to the field. So I've rescued a few lambs over the years, but they always want to go forward, and it's, it's counterintuitive to them to go backward. So uh, they're, they're pretty stubborn like that. I also learned that the, uh, a ewe can only nurse two lambs at a time, which is why when they have a birth of three or four, that it's a challenge for the shepherd. And also, when a lamb is separated, separated from the mother, the two of them bawl constantly. Last week on the farm was weaning time. It was, I think, Monday. And the din of the ewes separated from the lambs, oh my god, it just was continual uh, from that afternoon and through the, through the morning. Fortunately, by the next day, they had become a little bit used to or resigned to their, their separation and, and were uh, caught up in their own, their own being, the ewes being milked and the lambs darting about playing together. So. The one thing about the sheep, though, is that they rec recognize the shepherd's voice. And I learned that because when we had some of those three, the extras, the three or the four, fourth and the litter, uh, I got to hand feed them. And I didn't realize that they would recognize your voice or your smell until I go out to the barn or I take a walk along the pastures and go out back. And I would just be silly. I would be like, hello girls, I would talk to them. And I remember being in the barn, <laughs> calling out 
to the chief, hi girls, how's everybody today? And two or three of those younger ones would come right up to the edge and be like staring at you. And I, they get tagged when they're young. And so I recognized by their numbers that they were babies that I had hand fed. And so I would, you know, rub their heads, scratch their ears, and they would just be, it was like they were comforted by that. They were just that attention. And it was just kind of endearing, but it made me understand that, you know, sheep that are raised by a shepherd know the shepherd's voice and, and they know the shepherd's touch. They know to trust the shepherd. And so they, they find comfort in the shepherd's presence. So, I think that in the eyes of the good shepherd that we human beings have a lot in common with the sheep, don't we? We can be stubborn, we're also very curious, and being curious sometimes we get ourselves into areas where we may not, should, or should not be poking our noses. We're also very cautious, we can be shy, we can be silly, and as we've learned from this pandemic, we don't like to be alone. And sometimes we might get bonded to things that might not be quite right. Um, we might not be raised like the, like the lamb, you know, being bonded to me. I'm not going to be able to help it eat. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be the quite right person for them to follow. And so though Jesus is hinting at some of these things because he, 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 knows, he knows us. He knows humanity. And so that meant Jesus had a hard job. Being a good shepherd, I imagine that Jesus' heart would break over and over again when one of his flock was lost, maybe physically lost, maybe had gone off on a bad path and was led astray. I imagine that Jesus' heart would break when there were divisions uh, or conflict among the flock. Certainly, he would be, I know I would be, when someone, when one of them was injured and, or in pain. And of course, when one died. Jesus' job is hard in teaching us his flock because he's trying to help us avoid the pitfalls of life. He's trying to help us avoid our enemies, recognize our enemies, recognize the predators that might be coming at us in life, and, and avoid them, and steer ourselves on a better path. Jesus wants to lead us toward the good things, but like the sheep, we get distracted by the things of this world, and we always see something over there, or over there, that looks a little greener and may not be a safer pasture. So I imagine, could you put yourself in Jesus' place? Can you envision the hard work he had before him? And I think even broader, can we imagine the heart of the Divine One, our God, that breaks over and over for us when we are in pain or lost, or on the wrong path. Imagine how much God feels for us. And as the members of Jesus' flock, we're also called to feel the same for others. Whether they're one of our flock members right beside us, or somewhere else in the community. When I saw those sheep out grazing this week, I thought about the security, the safety, they, and, and what they looked forward to. Um, safely grazing in the sun on nourishing food. And I thought about how the sheep I was going with the metaphor that we are like the sheep. We all, as human beings, have, have the right to access the, that nourishing food that God provides for us, which, in essence, are all the gifts and all the blessings that God provides for us. 
And then I realized that not all of the flock in our world get to lie beside still waters or graze upon green pastures. Not all of us are taught to recognize the shepherd's voice. So we may wander dark valleys and walk in fearful, fearful in the presence of our enemies. While Jesus was with his followers, he shepherded them. It's a fantastic metaphor. And then his disciples, like Peter and John, teaching in Jerusalem, they carried on teaching and healing in Jesus' name. They were once part of Jesus' flock, but then they also embodied the good shepherd who led them so that others would recognize the voice of the shepherd today. They showed us that as part of Jesus' flock today that we can serve as shepherds too. So I invite you to think as the spring progresses, as the pastures grow green, think about what moves you as one of Jesus' faithful servants. What about our community, what about the needs of our world moves you? Are you someone who wants to work so that others might be nourished? Are you someone who feels the urge to help build so that all may be sheltered? We have to remember that it's hard work to be the shepherd, but it's also hard work to be the flock. But the point is, when we share the burden, when we work together, we can lead people beside the still waters. We can help sheep to graze in green pastures. And those that we help lead, those that we welcome in, those that meet the shepherd, know that they have the support to meet the challenges of life when they come hard at us. So the next time you're driving out of the countryside and you see the sheep independently, maybe spread out doing their own thing, remember that they also recognize the shepherd. We can all go out and do our own thing and do the work of the flock but it is the shepherd that, that leads us, that helps us know where to go and how to go. So let us be grateful that we have a shepherd who leads us, that provides for us, and shows us the way. My shepherd is the living God.
This day, as we gather for a time of prayer, I lift up that flowers have been given to the glory of God by Richard and Julie Evans in honor of Helen's 46th birthday, I believe it is, on April uh, 27th. That's this week. So I invite you if you would like to send Helen a birthday card this week. Um, I'm sure that will make, make her day. So let us be in the spirit of prayer. Holy God, one of the things that we remember most when we come to you for comfort is to say the words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And indeed, O oh God, when we turn to you, when we are carrying heavy burdens or when we are in need, we find that in some miraculous way, and perhaps not in ways we expect, but our needs are met in your time. And so we give you thanks. And in our thanks, we offer you the gifts of our prayers and praise, the gifts of our time, and the fruits of our labors. We also come to you, O oh God, for we know there are many who walk in dark valleys or may find themselves in the face of their enemies. And enemies take many shapes, such as ill health or mental illness, financial challenges, the needs for secure and a safe home, for secure and safety among our families or in our workplaces. And so we ask, O oh God, that you would shed light on the darknesses that draw us wrongly, though we might be misguided. Shine light in those places of darkness so that we might find that narrow path that leads us beside your still waters. We pray that you give us the strength and the courage that you gird us when we do have to stand up in the face of those things that threaten us or challenge us. And know that we can rely on you, we can rely on one another to find strength as your flock. We pray that there are times of thanksgiving where we graze in green pastures, where we take our rest beside still waters, so that when the tides of life turn, we can face them. And we give you thanks that one of those green pastures this week is Helen's birthday. We give thanks for her and for her family. And we know that even in our country, there are places where the grass is not so green, where people do still go hungry, who go shelterless, who don't have a place that they can feel safe among a flock but instead feel threatened because of how they look or how they sound or where they come from. We have all come from other places of God and we have all met with prejudice, with difficulty moving forward, whether it's in career or Somewhere in our lives we've experienced being held back or pushed around. Help us remember those times and in empathy recognize those who are not just being pushed around but some who are being abused and killed because of what they look like or where they come from. Help us to be the shepherds that help 
bring wisdom to communities, that help bring truth to light and love to the forefront in all that we do. We pray for the broken places, the places of war. And we pray, O oh God, that your voice may be heard among those who have the power to lead and to lead wisely, that they may make the changes in their own area of leadership that doesn't stand for the prejudice that we do see so much today. We can't fool ourselves that it's behind us. Those places that we are troubled, O oh God, anoint us with your oil, calm the waters, Help us trust in you and your leadership to guide our days and our nights. And to be with us now as we offer you our own personal prayers. prayers of God. And guide us this day and all our days to listen for your voice and to remember your promise that by placing our trust in you, we may live, we may dwell in your presence, in your house forever. This we offer in Jesus' name. Closing him has come to tend God's garden.